This lesson will review some of the comma rules that we should know for the ACT. First, let's look at, look at a few test hints. For and not, but, or, yet, and so are the only words that can connect independent clauses with just a comma. Use the acronym FANBOYS to remember these coordinating conjunctions. There will be some examples a little bit later in the presentation. On the ACT, a comma should follow every item on a list, even before the end. Another thing to remember is that no change is offered as an answer, and if it is offered, it is correct on about a fourth of those questions, so don't be afraid to use it. In other words, don't spend a lot of time looking for an error. If you can't find one, just mark no change and move on. Be sure to answer every single question. Even if you fell asleep for most of the test and woke up and marked a B on all of the tests, you'd have to wake up four times because you have to take each test separately, you could get a composite score of 12. So be sure that you answer even the ones that you don't know. Another good strategy to remember is that if you can eliminate at least one of the answers, maybe two, then if you have to guess, it will make your press, your um, chances of guessing right a little bit better. Another hint is that you choose a letter of the day. So anytime you have to just guess on, on some of the questions, say you have a math question that you just really don't understand or don't remember how to do, um, just choose that letter and use that all the time throughout the same test. Another thing to remember is when the room supervisor announces that are, there are five minutes remaining on the test, bubble in the very same letter for all of the remaining questions that you've not answered. You have a one in four chance of getting any one of them correct and you're never penalized for guessing on the ACT. Many of the punctuation questions on the ACT will deal with commas. So here are some comma rules that we're just going to review. One has to do with the comma that's before um, the conjunction that separates two or more independent clauses. Each of those um, um, coordinating conjunctions were mentioned earlier, and there is an example for each of these um, rules. Use commas to separate three or more words, phrases, or clauses in a series. Use commas to separate coordinate adjectives or adjectives which should describe a noun equally. Use a comma after an introductory word, phrase, or clause. This slide actually shows examples of introductory words, phrases, or clauses with the comma inserted. Anytime you have a date or an address that is made up of two or more parts, use a comma after each item, except in the case of a month followed by a day. So for example, Monday, comma, April 13, comma, was the first day of the class. We're going to Orlando, comma, Florida, comma, to see my sister. Two examples, one a date, one an address. And finally, about a word about comma splices. Avoid them. A comma splice is when two or more complete sentences have been joined with only a comma. You can either choose to punctuate them as separate sentences with an end mark, or you can use a semicolon, or you can find a way to join the sentences, uh, perhaps by adding a coordinating conjunction. So here's an example of an incorrect sentence which has the comma splice and a correct sentence which shows um, the two sentences being written as two separate sentences. This concludes the rules portion of this lesson. Now you will do some practice.